right, put your hands together. Out of your seat and hug someone, show them some love. Keep the beat in that section, please. Love on each other in Jesus' name. Leave no one untouched. Blessings flow. mercy and peace be unto you. Give me a little more volume up here from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll teach you what the correct response to that is at another time. But just look at somebody and tell them grace and peace be unto you. We need to thank God for the executive pastor tonight of our ministry. see us, Sonia Mixon. We appreciate her deposit, her presence, her preaching, amen, and her ability to do the will of God when she's called on. Uh, tonight, I want to thank God even for the assistant pastor. I believe he's somewhere around. He assisted me on this weekend going to Chicago. Did y'all see us there in Chicago? We helped ignite and birth a new fellowship there for Overseer Rockmore. And then we journeyed over to the Dream Center on yesterday. They wanted to keep us both places, but I am dedicated to whatever God is calling this ministry to become, and we've got to see it through. Amen. So I'm glad to be home. Y'all glad that I'm here? Because I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Dr. Deborah. Thank you, Tennis. Thank you. Thank, thank. Thank all of you that understand the value of leadership and the burden uh, that ministry really entails. Don't you dare think it's just about grabbing the mic, screaming hallelujah. Okay, there's a lot of uh, things that we do not discuss that comes along with ministry and all of it is warfare. But if God be for us, I can't hear nobody out there if God be for us. Then who can be against us? I want to thank God for Deacon Etherwood Stan Mays. (laughs) 
He also went with us to Atlanta, Georgia, and he served his bishop well there. And I tell you, they pay for their own flights. I mean, these are grown men who are chasing the oil of their leader. In a church where men serve, you women ain't clapping. That's a powerful church. Because in most ministries, women are doing everything. But not here. We want to raise the family the way the Bible describes the family. God is the head of Christ. Can't get no help. This sounds better. Christ is the head of man. Man is the head of woman. None of this means bullying. None of this means taking authority over. It's just an order that has been set by God that before he comes and checks the woman, he's going to check the man that's with that woman. And before God sends you to hell, he's going to talk to Jesus to see what's going on with you. You need somebody to be accountable for you. And somebody ought to be clapping on that because you need that. So I appreciate these brothers. Now, we have missed at least two or three services where we did not say our decree. So I'm going to now deputize all of you, never let us do that again. I said hello there. We are a partnership. So do not allow a leader to walk out of here and you then say in your car, we forgot to say our decree. No, you forgot to say in that seat, uh, it's decree time. All right? Thank you. So we are going to say this four times now. We're going to say it four times. Some of you almost have it. Uh, down to memory but please do not be a member and just look at it and not articulate it because death and life is in the power of the tongue amen? amen let's read remember the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church let that simmer because one day you're going to feel this, especially when we have 500, 1,000 members. You're going to have to train the person next to you that we didn't get here overnight. Amen? Amen? Let's read again. Remember the relationship between the pastor and a congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. Two more times. we making up. We've been penalized. We've been penalized. Let's go, church. Remember the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. If anyone is sitting or standing near someone that is not said it, kick them in the shin. Because that's a demon. No, no kids, don't kick each other now. I see them looking, I'm going to kick them in and no, no. We're talking to these uh, young adults and parents and seasoned ones. Let's read. Remember the relationship between a pastor and the congregation is a partnership with mutual respect and support being essential for the health of the church. Now let's clap for that proclamation in Jesus' name. Be seated. We also have guests, Shabbat. I want all the guests to know that I acknowledge you personally. And as I look on our sheet, guest list, uh, the first 
two people uh, from a town called Aurora, Illinois. Now, their pastor was at one time, their former pastor who's going to be with the Lord was at one time my men mentor. Then, are y'all talking? Because some of you don't have one, but you may need one. Then he became my uncle. Then he became my best friend. And uh, when he went to be with the Lord, uh, they tried to get me to do several things, but my emotions were too high to be able to do it. I hate seeing them that I love uh, leave this world early. I'm very sensitive to departure. Are y'all going to talk to me? But these two are members of the late former pastor was the late Bishop William James Campbell. Willie J. Campbell, clap for him. Rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. Dolores and Ty Sims, where are you? Because I sure want to acknowledge. There they are, right over there. God bless you. That's where I took his saying, it's all right now. That's just my friend. The next person is from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Clap for Stone Mountain, Georgia. I just left being out that way. Char Charlene Richer, where are you? Charlene Richer, Richer, Stan, can we thank God? Thank you. This next person is a guest of Jasmine Davis. Where's Jasmine? Jasmine, Stan, Jasmine. Hey there, Jasmine. From Orlando, Florida, his name is Adrian Rowell. Please stand, Adrian. Let's love on Adrian. And we have one birthday, and the birthday is today. The birthday of this person is today, so let them remember it. Heaven Jackson, where are you, Heaven? Hey, Heaven. Also want to pause and say that one of my armor bearers, Dr. Richard Wellington, is a little late and a little tired because he wanted to hear me so bad that he drove yesterday all the way past Tampa to Atlanta, Georgia, and he's on the highway headed back. Let's clap for Richard. Look at your neighbor and tell him you only get the relationship you build. Because a lot of y'all are jealous of relationships that people have with each other. But if you want one, you have to build one. Talk to me on that side. I love all my kids, but some of them are closer to me than the other. Not that I love them more. They are visible, active, show up, love, help cut grass, drive cars, clean. The other ones are cute. Love you, Dad. Love you, too. Why you don't hug me like him? Him come over. Him take out the garbage. Him, you know, you only get the relationships you build. The Bible says it like this. He that hath a friend. Come on, give me some Bible scholars. Must first show themselves friendly. Don't wait till somebody treats you right. You take the risk. Make the move. Treat somebody right. Amen. I told the Dream Center on yesterday, for those who will jump quick and then be seated, October will be the month of fulfillment. And November will be the month of enjoyment. And I need y'all to hear me. It's not been revealed to me what December will be. But when I get it, you'll hear about it. But this month, some of the things you've asked God to do that you claimed in the spirit, 
you're going to hold in your hand. Look at somebody. I think I'm going to use this saying all month. It shall come to pass. Will you tell somebody? Be friendly right now and speak with a smile and tell your closest neighbor, it shall come to pass. This simply means things are going to be fulfilled. God is not a man, thank you son, that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. I just feel like quoting the scripture, for we know that all things work together for the good of them. Do you love him? For the good of them who love God. I like you that rock with me on Wednesday night. I, I, I'm, I'm really feeling y'all. And to them who love God according to his purpose. October fulfillment, November enjoyment. Just in case you didn't know, and let me ask y'all this, then go back to my dissertation, but I want to make note, whether you understand it or not, I did it for young people. That young man Sunday preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey, stand up on that one. Stand up on that one. Yeah. That young man. Joseph Clayton. He's watching right now. Can we appreciate his deposit into this church? A lot of people of a certain group have left this ministry because they claim their gifts were not being used. Come on, talk to me. Some left because they said folk who joined got used before they did. When Sir Montez came, who I love, he was helping the leader of the liturgical dance team. He would teach her. They were friends. She moved on. He stepped up. You got to serve who's out front first. And you can't judge it by who does a thing better than the other. You've got to push whose God's hand is on. And most of them were adults that I'm not going to dwell on. Some of you still are friends with them. I'm not going to ever tell you don't be. But when you hang with people who put poison in your soul about your pastor and your leader, you become a potential advocate or potential. You're guilty by association. Something tried to hide in this ministry and it was getting serious and I'm not giving any names nor am I alluding to anyone but it involved Dr. Tracy and Sister Janice at one time and Dr. I, Lord, Lord God I called her doctor I meant prophetess I meant sister I don't know what I mean but Tracy Cleveland called me never bothered me all her life she probably told her husband he probably said we ain't having it called the bishop she called me and said, blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, here goes my side. She said, Bishop, for me to be safe, I ain't talking to that person anymore because you feed my soul. Then Sister Janice called and gave me a little more in-depth information. I'm not against anyone who stays or leaves, but when you leave, keep our name 
out of your mouth. It's just because if you're still talking about us, you haven't left. And last but not least to the group, if they've gone, do not ask me, can you participate in their functions? That's an idiotic question. Why would you want to unless you feel like you're gifted and your gift is not being used either? My job. No, please hear me. We're not going to have no cult. My job as your pastor is to cover you. You are not a child because you got to tell me where you're going, can you go. That's called accountability because I have been where you have not been. It's just simple accountability. Where you submit is where you serve. If a woman is married and grown and she is 50, 60 and she's married to a husband, she can go and come as she choose. But accountability says, baby, my girls want to go out tonight. Do you need me for anything? It's not that you have. It's called simple accountability. It keeps the house peaceful. Let me, let me show you something. And let me thank you. I won't teach long night, but let me thank you, Prophet Rahim. You have no idea what I'm talking about. I purposely, as your leader, because you're a leader, so when I am chastising leadership, it must be more rigid than membership. When I get on Elder Mixon, ask him what it feels like. It's a terrible experience. But open rebuke. See, you don't know what real love is. Because real love is if I don't care, I'll let you think you the best of everything in the world while folk are laughing behind your back. But as a father, it is my job to make sure you represent the kingdom very well. And sometimes overcompensation is not necessary. When you're securing who you know, you don't keep doing it to prove anything. If I'm helping anyone, wave at me so I know I'm not wasting words. So thank you for still being here. And I know your members will never understand it because members follow their leader. And when they see their leader being treated a certain way, they don't like who treated their leader that way. But you've got to teach them, uh, that's my leader's job. Because if not, I'm going to get on you and your whole church. I'm going to drive all the way to Leesburg, right? And show you what kind of leader I really am. Because when you don't have protocol, everything goes wild. Nothing is better than order. God said everything in order. Oh yeah, that's what God did. He does everything in order. Last thing I want to say, I'm sorry if y'all didn't like my return. But Dr. Barber respectfully calling you that instead of Mother Hope anything doctor today. The Lord is my shepherd. Listen to me. Don't quote, I shall not want. He maketh me, listen to me young adults, to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. All of this is beautiful. Now, all you guests that came to hear me prophesying hoop, we don't do that on Wednesday. You got to come on a Sunday. Amen. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk. Y'all not talking on that wall. 
through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil simply because I know you're with me. Thy rod and thy staff. Who's talking to somebody while I'm teaching? They comfort me. Thou prepares a table for me in the presence. Now we're there of my enemies. The table is prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. But now as your sheep, you're about to anoint my head with oil. Stop. Let me tell you what that looks like. Because it's obvious you say it with joy when it's a terrible experience. See, this is why I'm hard on leaders because y'all can preach but you don't prepare. So you got folk being happy over something that's traumatizing. So you done led me, you done fed me, you done protect me through valleys, you done prepare at a table, and now in front of my enemies, you're going to basically mistreat me. See, some of y'all want to be elevated, but you don't want to be embarrassed. And what I want to help you understand is when people see that you could take chastisement, they see a growth in you that's not in most people in the world. And you only pick on who God's picking up. I'm telling you what I know. Good to see you clapping, Deacon Timothy. But thou anointed my head with oil. This is how it looks now, Deacon May, so that you can learn more of the Bible than you've ever known. Because as you keep hanging with me, they're going to think you know this Bible. What happens is the shepherd creates a whole barrel full of oil. A whole bucket. Y'all see, you quiet. Some of you old saints, you didn't know this either. Don't look at me like we know this. You don't know this. A whole bucket of oil. And because the sheep have been out in the grass, drinking from water, going through valleys, hanging out with this person, that group, working on a certain job, they don't know that they've acquired nose flies. Some of you don't even know what has attached itself to your wool. Then you let them use your wool to put the wool over your eyes. This is crazy. You should be doing more than just singing over there. You ought to be around the world. You should have rebuked them in the midst of that sentence. Because they didn't approach you till you got here. So here is where your real ministry is. Out there is because you found yourself here. And it wasn't your name that helped most of you. It was you over there with Prophet Hall. Because every time you take an appointment, who knows me calls me. Listen to that experience. The nose flies are in the nose of the sheep. They are there doing one thing that I'm going to talk about. Then we're going to have 20 minutes on this Bible study. They are birthing their eggs for their next generation in your nostrils. That's called nosy. But they are birthing their purpose. I don't hear nobody. In the area where you breathe. If those eggs hatch, the little baby nose flies go straight to your brain and it drives you crazy, and then the sheep bangs his head on a rock until it dies. It's called, I can't take it no more.
Can I be the pastor tonight or y'all want to be something else? But if you know someone is poisoned, why do you stay on the phone two, three, four hours? You couldn't talk about my children, my pastor, my family, whether you're right or wrong, and still hang out with me. That is just not going to happen. So right before the shepherd allows them to eat at the table, basically, they grab the sheep's head, looks at the nostrils so that they can time how far this craziness is about to happen. If it's about to happen right away, they take that sheep's head and sticks it all the way in the oil and leaves it there while it feels like the shepherd is killing it. They resist and the shepherd leaves the head. Oh, y'all ain't in the oil. This ain't anoint my head like this. This is anoint my head like this. And they have to be so sensitive that they know when to pull their head up. So they look at the bubbles. They count the jerks. And just when it's about to take its last breath, a sheep coughs and then it dies. They jerk the head up and then that sheep goes through its own cough. And it blows all the nose flies. The reason why it comes out easy is the substance it was dipped in. Because when it goes there, it attaches itself for permanency until it births its purpose. Jerks it out, and it keeps sneezing until all the nose flies come out. Then that sheep falls on the floor like a dead man. Y'all don't want to hear this. And then that sheep right after that for one screamer jumps up and runs back to the shepherd yes, sir. Yes, sir. and starts rubbing his head because the sheep can now smell the scent of his shepherd one more time. The noise fly, the nose flies took the scent of leadership out of his nostrils. Now, you can hang with who you want to. I'm not saying anything. But if I know you're hanging with them and you start talking to three and four of these, I've got to put your head under. And I will. Because my job as a shepherd is to protect the sheep of this parish. Clap for your neighbor and their success in Jesus' name. Whatever I do, I will give you scripture for why I do it. These are not my feelings speaking. This is my responsibility. Now somebody going to go study that. Lord, shepherd my head with oil. I got to go study. That's what I want you to do. Get a little deeper in your word and not your craft. If you can rehearse three hours, read the Bible at least one hour. Because you're singing about God. But singing ain't never delivered nobody. It soothes them. Like David's music got an evil spirit off of Saul. But it kept coming back. Because you can't sing forever. Oh. 
We're still talking about miracles. Will you touch somebody and tell them, I am a miracle who's about to become a sign that's going to make my enemies wonder. Will you tell somebody that? See, y'all forgot that, but I am a miracle. I am. And when God puts me out there, I'm a sign. And the job as a sign is to make people wonder. That's why a miracle, it used to say miracle signs and wonders. Look at somebody and tell them, you're going to wonder how I got my next house. You, you, you're going to wonder. Because tell them I ain't got the credit and I ain't got 15 to 20% to put down. But if God's word is spoken over my life, all right, y'all don't. And I activate that written word. God does not cash. God does not need your cash to get it. But he then will give it to a person who is a good steward who knows what to do with their cash. He's not going to get you the house and pay your mortgage. That's not going to happen because that's proof you're lazy. Miracles avoid lazy people. Tell two people that miracles avoid lazy people. The first part of our teaching, and I'll do 25 minutes, we talked about yes, the miracle in the mess. Yes, Was anyone here that can say amen? amen. And we talked about Jesus spitting, yes, sir. salivating and mixing it with the dirt and playing in it and applying it to a man's eyes. And somewhere after that, he also proves that the anointing might be disgusting. He puts it and anoints his eyes. The Bible then says with clay, but the ingredients of the clay is dirt and spit. Look, somebody tell me that's a weird type of clay to me. That's a weird type of clay. I mean, that boy preached. You know the Lord. That boy preached. That boy preached. Y'all play with it if you want to, but he showed some of you that everybody young ain't giving no fluff. Somebody, some, you know, somebody know the Bible. And I like that he was himself competing against no one. We went from the miracle of the mess to the miracle in the meal. I'm going to stay with the meal, but let me tell you where I'm going and see if anyone jumps so I can teach. We said the meal that heals. Now I want to say to folk who are ready for November and October, the meal that multiplies. I want to talk about the meal. Because how can God take little and make little continue to multiply? And we are asking God for the bigger thing, but the bigger thing is the result of the small thing. See, you're supposed to praise God for the original product, not the end of your request. Yep, this side's slow again tonight. You don't thank God for the Mercedes. You thank him for the Mercury. You know, you don't thank God. You got to thank God for a Ford Escort. You got to thank God. Because I just want a nice used car. No, you just need a used car. You ain't got no car right now. It ain't got to be nice. It's got to be able to get you somewhere. You trying to be swag on a miracle. Man, the Flintstones got around putting their feet through the floor. If Elder Frank remember my first car that was given to me, it didn't have a pedal on it. It just had the metal for me to put my foot to accelerate. My foot got adjusted to it. It had a hole in the floor. I just put some steel right there. I didn't care what y'all were saying. I needed to get from point A to point B. 
And if you thank God for the small day, day it said despise not the days of small beginnings. You despise it when you don't appreciate it, when you don't thank him for it, when you can't dance and shabak him for it. But all of a sudden, a new car, ika ba ba ba. No, you should have ika ba 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 on that bus ticket. What delayed your real miracle was your pitiful, your pitiful response to what you had. I'm going to say that again. What delayed your miracle, possibly disqualified you, is your pitiful, your pitiful response to your small beginning. If I can have one or two people who know you're going to be wealthy in the near future, be honest that you didn't give God the correct praise for what you first had, jump up and say guilty. All right, be seated. Y'all being nice, but it's okay. See, Satan did not repo your ugly car. He didn't really kick you out of that one bedroom that had a few rodents. But your house that you claim God gave you, where is it at? The cars you said, look what God has done. Where is it? And I know some of you are going to use some crazy scriptures that are not contextually appropriate for your situation. I'm going to tell you what scripture does not fit your situation. And I want my mature members to jump. You cannot say the Lord giveth. And the Lord took that car away. The Lord gave it. Your negligence took it. Your poor stewardship took it. Your going to the mall, buying things you didn't need right now took it. Your trying to impress people is how you lost your house. So you dress like you paid your house off, but your house is gone because you're dressing too good right now. Never use money on a want if it hasn't yet supplied a need. Never do that. Never. I love this side tonight, but this side, I know why y'all like that. Because you the ones going through it. I know you are. I'm still waiting on God. No, you're not. No, you're not. He ain't never late. Well, the Lord says, September, what did I do wrong? You waited instead of worked it. That's what you did wrong. You waited. You didn't prepare for it. You didn't try to strive for it. You didn't find people that are in the same situation. You have not found folk who overcame what you were in. You just waited. Can I talk to talkers? When the Bible said faith without, yeah, you didn't work it. You waited. How can a job call you that don't have your number? Now, how does this work? How can you get married and you stay at home? You ain't been nowhere where the right men are. How do you find a husband at McDonald's or at the bar? Where you find him is how he's going to treat you most of the time. Well, I don't play golf. Don't play just dress like you do and go down there. I don't understand. Where y'all looking for these folk from? I need a car. Then date a salesman. Date a car salesman. Go out to eat with somebody that know the ball. How do you work this? If I'm helping anyone, shout yes. I appreciate it because I'm tired, but I love you all, and let's go here. I want to talk about the same scripture, but I'm going to pull out a few things you've never heard. But this one is called the meal that multiplies. And my approach, before we read these scriptures, my approach is to prove to 10 of you who will stand up politely, then sit down like it's you. 
is you've got to keep the small thing and not give the big thing too much attention. I knew I wasn't going to get you. No, sit down. Let me prove it. The woman who baked a cake. The prophecy was not that she would bake a cake. A prophet asked her for a cake. She said, I don't have a cake. Where's my Bible, people? I only have a handful of meal and a little cruise of oil. I've got a handful of meal and a little, everything that she has can fit in her hands. And then the prophet said, go and do as you said and make for you and your son, but make me a cake first. He did not speak miracle cake. See, that's why I'm trying to teach preachers. He did not speak a miracle cake. What he spoke over, I'm going to see if you stand, was the little cruise of oil and the handful of meal. He said, if you do what I said, the little cruise of oil shall not be wasted, nor will the meal fail. He said, protect the little. Pay attention to the little. Because if you've been making it off a little, that's a miracle. All right, I don't hear, I'll say it again. If you've been surviving and don't know how, you're in the climate of a miracle. Touch somebody and tell them, well, I guess I did receive a miracle already. When people look at you, get nosy for a quick second and be like, how are you able to do this? And some of us are so honest, we just say, if it wasn't for God, I don't know what to tell you. Do I have any people with me? I, I really can't take no credit. But whatever God's doing right now, I hope he keep on doing. What stopped the miracle? What's the miracle, Dr. Mixon? What's the miracle? It's the small, it's the cruise of oil not failing and the handful of meal not being wasted. That's the miracle. But capture this. As soon as famine was over and they could eat, right? The miracle ceases. Her oil fails now because she's out of that season. Now she got to make cake on what she had. So if she didn't save any of it, then she wasted the future. Thinking that this was going to last forever. I got my young adults back. Once God do it, he keep doing it. No, 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 ma'am. God did give you the husband and wife you have, but he did not maintain the marriage. No, ma'am. He was at your wedding. He's not in your wedding. Then you know, you know, he, he's not one of the altar boys. He's not the bridesmaid. Let's read Luke chapter 9. Sorry for not sending my scriptures ahead, but I had a long day. Luke chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. I'm not going to go deep here today. Verses 10 and 11, because I went deep and y'all didn't get happy, so I'm, I'm going to back it up a little bit. Luke 9, verse 10 and 11. Boy, y'all were so good Sunday. There was no seats in this church on Sunday. On a fifth Sunday? Ain't God being good to us right there? This church has more members on the Bible study than some folk have on a Sunday morning. Here is how Luke saw the fishes and the loaves. 
We didn't read his version on purpose. And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all that he had done. And he took them and went aside privately into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. I wish somebody would talk. And the people, when they knew it, followed him. And they didn't just follow him. They received, he received them and spake unto them the kingdom of God. Hold on. And healed them that had need of healing. My Wednesday membership should be sharp. Because y'all like, Bishop, we don't have no proof this deficient in the low. Because you won't keep reading. So how did I get the meal that heals if first he didn't heal them? He healed them before they ate. Oh, y'all are quiet now. But to maintain that healing, they needed a meal. Y'all are quiet now. Y'all. You cannot get a miracle, maintain it without proper management of knowing how the scriptures work in that situation. If you get a miracle from God and keep it away from the scripture, that miracle will turn into a monster. Let me prove that I'm not Going to the left or right, as some of you would believe. When the day began to wear away, y'all remember, then came, the day, then came the 12 and said unto him, send the crowd away. This after he healed them, that they may go into towns and countries round about large and get victuals, for we are here in the desert place. But he said unto them, give ye them something to eat. And they said, we have no more but five loaves. There you go. Two fishes. It's the same story. Who, who, who keeps messing with my sound? That's the same story. Some of you like certain scriptures. You don't like the story. So you be quoting scriptures for God to change your situation, but he don't pull scriptures out of context. So you're quoting illegitimate scriptures for illegitimate narratives. You must read the entire story. So before you judge somebody, find out what their story... All right, let me get out of here. Because some of you have no details. But you got a lot to say. Even about singing. Who told her she can sing? Who told you you can sing? Holding the note don't mean you can sing. I know some folk who can only sing a cappello. I know some folk who can only sing falsetto. Then I know some folk who can only sing natural. But tell that natural singer to hit a high falsetto. Can't do it. Tell the person that's falsetto to go natural. Can't do it. So you're not a singer. You're graced to sing in your space. We couldn't put you on Broadway because you need several versatile styles of singing to sing on Broadway. You can't sing in the opera. No, you can't do that type of singing. You laugh at that in church because it ain't got no R&B swag attached to it. No, 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 no. A lot of us can hold a note, but we cannot sing. I don't claim to be a singer, but I can hold a note. After this is when they sat down, I'm almost there, and they ate. But certain people followed him, not for the fishes and the loaves. The original reason they followed him was to be healed. Now, I'm going to say this and see if two of my grown members will jump so I don't waste all of this. Some of you may not understand, you're eating yourself to death. I 
I've heard the Lord speaking to me for uh, clean knees for about two weeks, maybe a little more than two weeks, Dr. Deborah. He didn't give me a date. He just gave me whatever that feeling is that I feel when I know he's speaking. And he told me, and I've not done it yet, but now that I'm reading this, I think I need to get ready to do it. He told me, he says, listen, I want to show you a different way of being healed. And I asked him, you know, we don't need no way, man. Just speak it. You know, I love you. Just give it to me and I'll do right. He said, no, no, no. I need to reverse how you eat. What I want you to do right now is stop eating meat just for a little while. I was like, no, no, we can start with cake or bread. See, I can't get no help there. Like, let's start with something else now, Lord. Look at some of you lies. I could easily do that. No, you can't. Because you don't create your appetite. There is a control mechanism in your taste. But don't worry, I'm going to get there in a minute. You actually don't choose your meal. He didn't tell me I had to do it long. He didn't say I had to do it strong. I think what he was seeing is would I just listen? I was like, can we like just have chicken? See, y'all think y'all go through this and I don't. I'm like, how about just chicken? Am I the only one that's trying to negotiate? A, a, all right, okay. So if I come off all meat, does that mean I can have ice cream? Peach cobbler, you didn't say desserts. All right, I'm the only one that's ever gone through this. I've seen so many vegetarians or vegans say they don't eat meat, but they're so overweight. I'd be saying, well, what are you eating? Well, mine is bread and desserts. Then you ain't no vegan. You're not a vegan. It's eggs in that cake, milk. You are not a vegan. I want to go and attempt this, so y'all pray for me. I, I don't lie, so I'm going to have to do this, and I'm going to take Elder Frank with me. Oh, yeah, we both going to give birth to these babies. Because if they don't go with me, I can't hang with them while they eat meat. They got healed. They didn't follow him for the fish and the loaves. Giving God praise should not be for product. All right, I'm about to get out of here. It should be because he woke you up this morning. You might be sick, but you woke up this morning. If you had the choice between dying tomorrow or getting up with a little pain, what's your choice? Because the only way you can stop feeling pain, he says, is to die right now. So what's your choice? I'm tired of all this pain. Keep complaining. Only one way out of it. Especially if it's your season to experience pain. Jesus has never, hear what I said, Jesus has never, Elder Patty, given miracles outside of what he taught. Hold on, hold on. Matthew, I mean Mark chapter 16. Go down to verse uh, number six, 16. It's not even on my notes. The Lord's taking over. Mark chapter 16. 
put it on the screen because I don't have it on my notes. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Are y'all with me? But he that believeth not shall be damned. Next verse. These signs shall follow them that believe. Not them that preach or prophesy. This is available to every believer. My right side lead me. In my name they shall cast out devils. Speak with not other tongues, new. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. But that thing has to be unbeknownst to you. You don't grab bleach and prove that you're God's child by drinking a shot of bleach. Somebody has to slip something in there that's unaware. And when you drink it, be amazed that you are not feeling the effects of it because I'm a sign that'll make you wonder. Let me keep going. They shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Verse 19. Here we go. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand. Don't go to the next verse till I tell you. To the right hand of God. Jesus is out of the picture. But he gave you your rights before he left. Oh, yo. Verse, verse 20. I'm going to see who's really with me. And they went forth after he gave them all the instructions and preached everywhere. Stop. Even though he's gone, the Lord's working with them. Uh-oh. Through what? Confirming the word. Oh, yeah. With signs following. So the miracle is not first. The miracle is a result of the meal. Oh, y'all in quiet. You've got to eat it before you receive it. You're not full looking at food. You're full when you digest the meal. Yeah, you can judge the meal and tell how full you may be. Ah, uh, I can't eat all this. Oh, Lord, they give a lot of food. Now, what kills me, I wish I had a happy member tonight, is most of y'all say you can't eat all of it? You eat all of it. Then you protect your appetite. It wasn't really that much. It just looked like it was. Please, it wasn't all that. You just ate a 30-ounce T-bone steak by yourself. <laughs> Signs following. And the signs that follow, Sister Jackson, thank you, follow because he was confirming his word. Not your prayers, not your dreams, not the vision you had. God does not hold himself hostage and responsible for your dreams. You've got to augment that dream. Y'all don't hear me and fashion it to where it fits what the Bible says. The Bible does not fit your dreams. See, a lot of you are quiet now because I'm preaching against something that you've been saying for yourself so long that you hate to now admit you're wrong. Yes, you can dream that you got married. You can dream the same man eight times. That still don't mean that's the man for you. That is your dream. That might be with some ice cream eaten late at night and some Laffy Taffy's early in the morning and that glass of wine you snuck and drank and it fabricated what your desire was.
Because let me tell you when God is normally in a dream. I should never even went there. I shouldn't even went here. Let me show you when most of you who dream or have vivid dreams. I do once in a while and every vivid dream I have is not of God. As clear as it is, it is not God. But let me show you how most of you know when God is trying to say something to you and not saying actually what you're dreaming. The first person that jump will be blessed. If you are falling off a building, you wake up before you hit the ground. If you're running from an enemy, you're running fast, but you ain't moving quick in the dream. See, I thought you was a dreamer. If you are getting married in a dream at a wedding, you wake up before you see who it is. If you have a sexual dream, you wake up. All right, let me leave that alone. You wake up with the feeling, but ain't nobody there. <laughs> And then that makes you want to call somebody, go out on a date. No matter what dream you have, make sure that dream fits somewhere in the scriptures. Or count it as a great experience. In my dream, I slept with Janet Jackson. That was an experience. Y'all jealous. It's a dream. I ain't going to ask you who you was with in your dream, but I'm going to leave y'all alone. And if Janet came in here tonight, I cannot say, you're mine, because me and you last night She'd be like, I wasn't there. Yes, you were. <laughs> you see how crazy you look trying to defend a dream? Let me say this, then I'm going deeper, then we're going to roll. Ten of you catch this, say amen after you hear it. No one ate that did not stay for the lesson. The only ones that got access to the miracle meal were the ones that stayed for hours listening to the message. I might as well tell you, they were there from sunup to sundown. And I'm going to see if three of you who will be wealthy jump. And their posture was they were standing the whole time. Because when he got ready to feed them, he said, make them sit. Which meant they were in one posture for hours. Engrossed, captivated by the message of God. You in here sleep, checking your phone, talking to a neighbor behind you. That's why you're broke. That's why you're lonely. Your attention is not at attention. Touch somebody and tell them your attention is not at attention. Somebody mad at some of you. You ain't got to say that to me. They mad. When I grew up, I learned to pay attention because the mother said, stop all that talking. Look straight ahead. And some of y'all's preachers' kids, not that I can tell, but you are. Why preach a child doing so bad? Didn't pay attention. The only people that ate were them that stayed to hear the spiritual message. All right, here's for one screaming man. The spiritual meal determined the natural meal. So those who ate the meal 
was offered another meal because God will never hold you hostage in church and not be working for you outside of church. But if you restrict him in here, he gives you a restricted life out there. Yep, you that didn't clap. No, don't delay clap. Don't think about clapping. God knows that that ain't real. Do you know what's crazy? I say it all the time. The shortest movie that's in the movie theater is two hours and 20 minutes. And it's almost three hours because the previews and everything is about 25. And you sit there. And I've been in movies, let me see if a person jumped, where I watched it hoping the end was going to be better. And when I left, I said, I cannot believe. All right, I ain't got that. I slept through this. I, I stayed through this foolishness. Freddie done came back to life. I thought the man died in. But in church, it's not a movie. It's an actual potential offer to make you the star in your own show. And because you won't practice the script, y'all ain't. Because you won't learn your lines. Because you won't show up for rehearsal. Because you can't make this book come alive. You don't just read your lines for the movie or the play. You've got to become the line you read and make those lines come alive until people believe you are who you are portraying to be. How are you a royal priesthood? How are you a holy nation? How are you a peculiar people? How are you chosen of God and live like you live right now? Only season folk go to bed at 9.13. Real black Negroes ain't trying to go to bed at 9.13. Then you go home and the sleep that hits you in here lifts. And you go in that refrigerator, watch some Netflix, wake up tired to go to work because the devil was in your service rocking your spirit to sleep. Soon as you leave here, where we going to eat? It's crazy. Then you said we're going to take it out and wind up sitting. Then look and say, I can't believe it's 12 o'clock. Well, it's already late, so we might as well stay till they close. I'm old, Dr. Mixon. I'm getting older. In this day, my age would be considered old now compared to them. And Dr. Barber, let me say this to you, and Dr. Butts, and maybe y'all will help support me. It's funny that when folk actually like you or like being around you, they'll call and text you at 12 o'clock and say, what you doing? 12 or dawn o'clock, midnight. You sleep yet? What? Everybody quiet now. Some folk will say things like this. If you've ever heard it, jump up. I know you're tired, but... I, I, I know you're tired, but... Wait till you see a video that I'm going to play on Sunday. I got a small clip I need y'all to see. The word of God, the way you digest it, will also create the way you will live outside of church. 
If you read the scripture and believe it, I came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Then if you digest it and fully believe it and read it every day, one day you're going to walk out and abundance is going to slap you upside the head. Somebody going to be like, I got a job for you. It starts off with $130,000. But I don't have a degree. You don't need one. God told me you the person for the job. Now that scripture has created a script. Short form for scripture. Young. Script. Script. Short form for scripture, which means you have to walk this thing out. Now, let's see what my role is in your life. Then I'll go to the closing because I'm sorry that I bored you all. First Corinthians chapter two, verses four and five. First Corinthians chapter two, verses four and five. King James Version. And then if we have the living Bible, I would like to reread this in the living Bible. Not the message. I ain't giving y'all no message Bible for about another three weeks. Time to grow. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Listen to what it says. And this is me talking to you. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Do I have help? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I lost all my preachers and elders. Put it in the Living Bible. Do we have that? Because if not, I, yeah, let's, let me. And my message and my preaching were very plain. I have not used any of my hermeneutics or homiletics on y'all or exegetically using expository preaching. I try to make it as plain as possible. And some of you still look lost, even in simplicity. No big words, no swelling words. Just talk to them. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power, y'all need to, of the Holy Spirit. Do we have a verse 5 on that? I did this so you would trust not in human wisdom. Talk to me, grown-ups. But in the power of God. In the power of God. We got any more? Oh, let's go to six. Yet when I'm among mature believers, I wish they would talk to me. I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. Is there any more? Now, what I'm doing, and y'all missed it, is I'm asking for seconds and thirds. Can I have some more, Lord? I'm treating the scripture like a good piece of pie, and y'all lost. Because every time I read it, it gets better and better, and I eat. Hold on. Go to Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23 and let's start at verse 9. On the left hand where he doth work but I cannot find him. I can't behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand. Don't go till I tell you that I cannot see him. This is Job saying through all I'm going through. I don't know why I'm going through it and God is not talking to me. I'm just trying to get a clear understanding of what all of this is about. Go back to seven. Go to seven. Let's build the crescendo. There the righteous might dispute with him, which means you get to ask God some questions. Should I be delivered forever from my judge? Verse eight. Behold, I go forward, which means I'm in search of answers. But he's not there. I even think about backsliding. 
but in that I can't perceive him. Oh, I got my young adults. I ain't got this section. Verse 9, come on, I'm, I'm hungry. On the left hand, where he doth work, I cannot behold him. Then he hideth himself on the right hand, and he makes sure I can't see him. I told you, don't go in this verse, I tell you, but you're okay. He knoweth the way that I take. Y'all thought this was a good verse too. When he hath tried me. The word pure is not in there. Stop saying that. I shall come forth as gold. No one is 100% pure. As a human being, no one in here. I don't hear nobody. It's a hundred percent pure. Don't go yet. The next few verses, when I read this, anyone that jumps because you can put it together lets me know that you're baking a meal. Verse 11. My foot hath held his steps, which means I have not declined from you. I have kept your words. And I have never turned back. I've not declined. Next verse. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. Here it goes. I have esteemed his word, the words of his mouth, more than my... I eat his word more than I eat my own natural food. So I need to know where am I lacking? I got a member in the back feeling I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. This Bible study, we almost out. I'm tired and sleepy and I'm going to still stay up because I don't like spending my life unconscious. All the commandments which I command thee this day, I need you to observe to do. Who's talking to me? I'm reading it. If you do that, you will live. And, and, and. The power of multiplication is in how you eat. Some of you are soon going to learn this spiritually from natural to spiritual. Two of my future millionaires jump. You got to stop. You've got to stop living to eat. You've got to eat to live. Some of y'all eat anything because you live to eat. But when you eat to live, you're picky about what you digest. That's not good. That's not healthy. That's going to harm me. That's going to send my pressure up. This is going to make me go to the doctor. I don't have my EpiPen, but give me a small piece. After you multiply, go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Verse 2. We're almost done. Come on, stick in there. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years. Where? Tell somebody I'm coming out of my desert. I'm coming out of my wilderness. I'm coming out of the driest season of my life. Oh, I'm going to preach it Sunday. Y'all hang on.
Why is it that we need more word in the wilderness? To humble thee. I put you in the wilderness to humble you. To prove who you are. To know what's really in your heart. Oh, y'all ain't to. The hell you've been going through is to find out who you are. I can't bless you yet because you're still too stubborn, too cocky, too arrogant, too indignant. I got to wait till all this stuff is gone. Because money only makes you more of what you already are. I've got three people helping me. To prove thee, to know what's in your heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. The third verse, you used to seeing it somewhere else, but it's in there. And he humbled thee, suffered thee to hunger, then fed thee with manna, from which you knoweth not. Neither did thy fathers know, which meant he made a meal from heaven and let earth actually eat it. Oh, y'all, it's manna from heaven. They couldn't buy it. They don't know where it came from. God did this himself. Look at some of y'all who don't believe in miracles. I don't believe God cooks. Well, he don't pay bills then. I don't believe God does this. Then he don't find husbands either. The Bible said when Elijah was ready to die, he said, go to sleep. And it said, God baked him a cake. And it wasn't no spirit cake. He said, get up and eat it. He said, this cake is so good that you'll be able to eat nothing for 40 days. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man, here we go, doth not live... Y'all used to read that in Matthew. It's been in Deuteronomy way before it got to Matthew. Man shall not live by natural bread alone, but by every, why y'all quiet, that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth a man live. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Whoever said thank you, you're welcome. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Then two paragraphs, and let's go home, and some of you will wake up again with nothing to show for it. Even in the month of fulfillment, you know it's hard to fulfill nothing. So God is 100 times your zero equals zero. His part is already done. That's multiplication. And if you're stuck at zero, no matter what God does, when we multiply it because you have no part in it, it's zero. Yep, some of you fail math. Simple arithmetic. Simple division and multiplication. Forget pre-calc and trigonometry and algebra. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the what? Come on Wednesday, into what? To be blessed or to be what? By whom? Really? The hell you going through, the spirit led you there. I know you hate to digest that. That what you've been in for the past few years was God designed. And everybody ain't strong enough to live in the wilderness. Some of us make the wilderness look good. Because they jealous of you while they don't even know. I'm in the worst season of my life. 
But some of you are so awesome, you make bad look good. I ain't going to preach, but I feel it. If you know your pastor, you know I'm holding my hands because I'm holding back. Verse 2. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, let me break this down. He afterward was hungered. Don't, don't turn that. Dr. Tracy, if this makes sense, you can wave at me. My man can wave at me. All of y'all that got good lungs can scream. Catch this. In order for Jesus to give you a miracle and give you something better than what you had, he has to let you go through a season of having nothing. And put you in a situation that has nothing to offer. What I want to eat, I can't eat it in the wilderness. And I can't just walk out of it because I was led in there. Oh, yeah, by the Spirit. The Lord put some of you that are dating people in. He allowed you to go into the bad relationship you're in. Because he, he wants to first get rid of the hunger that you had. So that when you come out of it, now you know what kind of person you need. Not the person you crave. Do y'all understand, right? So God will take you in a situation where it's full of temptation. I hate her. I'm going to cheat on her. I want to do this because you're with the right one at the wrong time. God's trying to see whether you're with that person for the right reason. What's the motive of your heart? Did you actually mean to death do you part? Did you lie when you stood in my presence? Oh, it got quiet again. Oh, I ain't going to let up for nobody, not even me. We ain't letting up. After 40 days, after 40 days, afterward, he hungered. Let me say this, then we'll go to three and four, read one paragraph, five of you jump on this. I should be able to eat when the fast is over. But Jesus is about to teach you that even though you're now free to do it, don't mean you should. Uh-oh, it just got quiet. The fast is over. I'm supposed to be hungry. I ain't ate in 40 days. But if you run after it, right after you get out of it, you're desperate. You learn no patience. Verse 3, because now they're about to bore me. Y'all help me, whoever's reading. And when the what came? Let me tell my young adults this, because I know they'll talk to me and my visitors on the right side might scream on this. You're not tempted if you're not offered what you want. I turn down a lot of men, Bishop, because you don't want them. You can't get no points for turning down what don't turn you on. You got to be able to turn down what makes you want to turn up. See, the thing is, right? Oh, it got quite. Hello. Hello. Is anybody home? Hello. Jesus is being tempted by the devil who's coming in the form of temptation. And the devil knows that Jesus being God in the flesh. Once you are covered with the panoply of flesh, you have fleshly desires. So Jesus is now, talk to me here, being offered something that he wants. Because that's why it's temptation. 
the only way he gets out of the temptation, which says, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread, is verse 4 says, for a screamer, this is the only way he gets out of it. He answered and said, it is written. It is written. He had to eat something spiritual to handle something natural. If he didn't have a word in him, he would have not been able to walk away from the offer. Some of you are so biblically weak. That you can't work a, walk away from a bad, good offer. It's bad, but you like the good that's in it. Hello? It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. You may want to scream on this. The assistant pastor should get happy over this. My guys should just go off, but they not. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. This is after Jesus has finished the fast, should eat, has power to turn stone into bread, but he's not going to waste a miracle on his appetite. Stop. Wait a minute. Just because he's God and can, he's like, no. He says, I'm not going to waste a miracle on this. I'm going to use scripture on this. So when he said it is written, this scripture only works against the devil. I'm going to see who jumps now because it's from Deuteronomy chapter 3 and 8. Jesus didn't create this. He went into the Torah, opened up a scripture, and regurgitated what was in the Bible. It is written. Uh oh, hold on now, elder. It is, and if he has to use the scripture, who the heck do you think you are? That's why Wednesday's my favorite day, because what we hear will determine how we heal. What? Nobody should be jealous of me. Just eat. We've been saved the same amount of years. Love the same God. Why we ain't living the same life? Because I eat. I bring them up at every table. I don't talk more about women than I do the scripture. My guys in here, we talk about women, but I, I just can't do what some of them do. Look at her. Look at her. Man, look at the Bible. Because that woman going to cost you some more money. I'll be like Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood, all the commandments which I command thee. I'm studying while they looking. I'm like, nah, I got to preach. If they could get as excited reading this. As they do at viewing that. Oh, I'm all man. I like looking. But when it gets too far. When the temptation thing flares up. I got to find out what's written. Now how I, you know, how I get out of this. Oh yeah, I know how I get out of this. I ain't about to die with her because Samson lost two eyes. David lost his kingdom. No, nah, no, nah, I'm good. See, if you don't have enough scripture in you to refer to, you're going to do something very stupid. I've been out, Dr. Tracy, you know your bishop single. I've been out on dates, right? And, 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 and and Dr. Tracy, if I choose to go on one tonight, right? I'm going, right, Dr. Tracy? But I'm not. But if I chose to, I am. But I've been out before, and those dates have gotten a little hot and steamy. And the person would ask me, do you like me? And this has been my answer all the time when there's temptation. They'd be like, can we see each other again tomorrow? I'd be like, I'm sorry, we'll catch up later. Ain't no way if you turn me on tonight, I'm going to see you tomorrow. You Cause I'm smart. 
I'm wise. I have too much to lose. You are not getting me. See, that's how you got got. That's how you lost your job. That's how you lost your apartment. How much scripture do you know that if the devil is setting you up for the okie doke you may not even know the whole scripture verbatim, but you'll be like somewhere in the Bible. See, yo, yo, it said, or oh, my bishop just talked on this yesterday. I'm not sure how it's worded, but I think he said something about, yea, though I walk through the valley or something like that. As long as you can get to it. Takes years to perfect it, but at least get to it. Jesus quoted what was written, verse 5, 6, 7, one paragraph. I'm now going to close. The devil take them up into a holy city, set them up on the pinnacle of the temple. To me, I'm messing with this. For one screaming woman who loves teaching, this is the devil giving people in church what they want, a position and power in the church. And everyone that's promoted don't mean it came from God. I just want to help some of you that the scripture says the devil has the power to take you up. Even into holy places. Even assist you to go into the top of your game. Then you say, look what God has done. No, no, no. Some of these women in here that's been quiet the whole sermon talking about I'm waiting on my husband. You ain't getting one. I might as well just tell you. If you can't get excited over God's word, he won't send you a man you can get excited over either. God only exchanges. All right, let me, I keep, I keep trying to tell you. There's no way I would marry a woman who looked like you all service. It's just no way possible I'm coming home to that. Mm-mm. Verse 6, after they get to the top of their spiritual walk, he then said to him, now if you be the son of God, cast yourself down. Now Satan, let's see if a man or woman scream, pulls out scripture because now he knows Jesus' defense is the Bible. So he pulls out a scripture because the devil knows the word too. The devil said, isn't it written he shall give his angels charge concerning thee? That's in the book of Psalms. Now, Vickers, if I tell you this and it makes sense, John, if it makes sense, a flight attendants or who look like one, if it makes sense to any of you who would jump up, I need a few buddy passes. If it makes sense, I'm, I'm your pastor. I need the companion pass. You ain't married. If it makes sense for 30 folk that to jump, I'm going to see. Jesus pulls his scripture from the law. We scripture folk can only go to Psalms. That's a hymn book. Oh, y'all didn't catch that. That ain't scripture. That's a big hymn book right in the middle of the Bible. Jesus used scripture. Satan used lyrics, but they were written. Your lyrics ain't scripture. They're just what they are, a song. It is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee, concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot. Oh man, you went and got a scripture. And Jesus, who's the author, has to now respond without discrediting what's written. 
Let's see his response for those who scream. Jesus said, it is written again. So on top of what you said, let me put something stronger on it. Thou shall not tempt. Hold on, y'all quiet. Jesus, for the first time for three folk, has just told Satan who he is. Negro, don't forget, I'm God. Don't try to use your word against me. Now that you brought up what I wrote, let me tell you who I am. Y'all are only known by what you can quote. I'm making it plain. I know you're tired. Some got to go to work. Some don't. Then when some of you do go to work, your mind stay in the bed anyhow. Same way it does when you come here. You ain't left the bed all day. Jesus said to him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Two more verses than that paragraph. Then you can stand and go home, watch Netflix, Prime, whatever you're going to watch, the debate. Again, Help me, Dr. Tracy. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. And he says, my last temptation is to show him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He's about to tempt Jesus with this for talkers. Everything your father said you had to die for, I'll give it to you if you worship me. In other words, Satan just said for three folk who want it the right way, there's an easier way to get it. It's called, not promise, compromise. 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 Lord, those who eat tonight and stay late as they did when you fed them fishes and loaves, please give them the best sleep ever and give them promotions, raises, and healings. No, not all y'all. I said those who are eating, not you that are here. Everybody that was there did not eat. It said excluding women and children. Maybe y'all missed that everyone did not eat. Take them up, show them the kingdoms of the world. The next verse, verse 9. And saith unto him, all these things, see, I'll give it to you. You don't have to die on the cross. You ain't got to be whipped and bruised. He's telling him, forget that scripture. He was wounded for my transgression. Man, listen, let's rewrite the Bible. Look how quiet that. Let's rewrite this. We don't need no church. We don't need no more scriptures, no rules. Just fall down. Worship me. Even Satan wants worship. He don't want praise. Oh, y'all. He wants intimacy. When folk up here even singing, give them glory. Clap their hands. They don't mean half of that. That's practice. They don't mean half of that mess they telling y'all. Because they ain't worship all day till they got here. They ain't fasted. They ain't consecrated. They ain't turned down the meal. All that is lights, camera, and action. And we that have a lot of scripture, we know it. Those who are void of it, they like it. Donald Lawrence, one of the greatest producers known to man in this century. I don't care what you say. If you don't know music, you definitely don't know what I'm talking about. Donald Lawrence lives in Chicago. He's a colleague and a friend of mine. He had great albums throughout his whole tenure. 
with with a choir called Tri Tri City. Then he had the Darns the Donald Lawrence Singers. Then he birthed a few other people out of there. You know the Vashon Mitchells and other people. He just he just birthed a lot of people. But his greatest album project that made him the most money and made him then get hired by a professional school to teach where he can't tour no more was when he joined Dr. Bill Winston's church in Chicago. When he joined, see you don't know this, when he joined Bill Winston church, get his last new project, every song he wrote was from a sermon he preached. Oh, y'all, every single song on the project is birthed from a sermon that was preached the week before. So his sermons are actually, I mean, his lyrics are actually scriptures. Verse 10 and 11, we're done. Lord, I gave them my best, but I guess my best wasn't good enough. Jesus said unto him, get thee hence, Satan. Hold on. Jump on this. One of you out there, jump on this. The last time he tempted him and tried to quote scripture on Jesus, Jesus let him know he was God. This time, Jesus is letting the tempter know, I know who you are. You the devil. Y'all ain't the and the more you eat his word, the more you know who people are. You know what spirit they are functioning out of. You be like, you know what? I thought you were my friend. I thought you really cared. Get thee hence, Satan. Look what he says again. Every temptation he wins because he says, it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Which means I will not worship you, even though it's easier. Even though it's a quicker process. If it's not written, I don't want it. I got to be sure that my appetite is not the same as it was when I went in. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And now I'm coming out and still crave the same thing. Last verse. I'm not going to read my paragraphs until next Wednesday. Here's where we're going to close. Look at this and eat it. Then the devil leaveth him. After the devil knew how much word he knew. And that he couldn't get him because he's going to keep referring back to the word. Oh, y'all cry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reference the word. Will you tell somebody that who actually came for the right reason tonight? Keep referring to the word of God. Now, I see some of y'all and God's going to bless you because you're saying, you know what? I should know more Bible. I'm going to start listening better. You're going to get blessed because the word you don't have is the world you'll never enjoy. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, opening your eyes, let's close, angels came. Hold on. He had no help the whole temptation. Help came after he got the victory. Now you need to be refreshed. Y'all need to, you need to be restored. The angels came and they ministered to Jesus. He needed his creatures to minister to him. Because at this time, he's God in flesh. And they had to come tell him, you did good, God. 
for you to be taking the place of weak man, taking the place of disobedient people. Oh, yeah, for you to come down here and take on the form of a man and walk upon this earth for people who are ungrateful, unstable, incapable, depressed, depraved, and deprived. Boy, I want to preach so bad. I can't wait till Sunday. Read one more verse. Stand, everybody. We're going home. After all of this, this is where I'll preach Sunday, but after all that Jesus just went through, we never saw what he ate. We know he ate. But the meal is not listed. See, some people want to know what you eating. How you doing it? And they start off with subtle questions. You have a job? Cause they looking at your car. What kind of work you do? They see a ring on your finger. You engage? Oh, y'all that nosy folk ain't saying that. Does he go to church with you? They try to. You know, they brown nose it. I heard you went to Bible study. What did he say? It's online. How long did you stay? I stayed until the meal was finished. I heard you don't have a job. Still don't, but I'm about to move into my new place in about a week. What makes you think? Because October is what? Hold on. Dr. Mixon, when it's your turn to preach, you better catch this. October, Octo, Octo is the number eight. Octo, octagon, eight sides, octopus, one head, eight tentacles. Octo, October is the number eight. In the Roman calendar, before there was a Gregorian calendar, October was the eighth month. Gregorian came, took two more months, and made October the 10th month. 10 is the number of a new season. Oh, hold on. So some of you are about to enter a new season so you can have a new beginning. I know you don't believe it. And God is going to have all kind of tentacles out there working for you. You're going to be okay. If you eat with the right folk at the right table. Stay away from the serpents. Stop bowing and compromising. We're all human. We're going to make mistakes. But don't become the mistake you make. Some of y'all look so sad. And most of you women that look like that, a man did it to you. And he's still in you, even though he ain't with you. You look lonely, even with beautiful hair, smiling face, designer clothes. You look lonely. Stop dressing up and look up. Make your dress code match your behavior. If you're going to pay a lot of money. All right, let me get out of here, man. Uh, listen, uh, listen, I'm just trying to help you. Because real successful men know pitiful women from a mile away. Wait till I play that video on Sunday. That's going to be the opening to my sermon. It's simple, but I'm going to be watching your faces. Bring your best poker face on Sunday. 
that video going to be playing and you're going to be like, yep. You want to be in a ministry in the church and then outside the church at a table and meetings where healthy people dialogue. <laughs> Foolishness is to be avoided. Y'all ain't talking. Gossip and rumors, stop looking at it online. Don't feed your spirit what can turn into successful content. It's unhealthy. I'm getting calls from everybody, famous people. Is God giving you a word for me about my case? Famous people. They said, I'll pay you. I wanted to say, pay me this and then give them a word. But God says, I don't want your name in it. I was like, but Lord, they need somebody. God says, but Todd, my son, do me a favor. I am letting them go through this because most of them whose names are mentioned were once mine. I can name them, but I won't. They started in church. In the choir and everywhere. He said, let me have them. I'll send them to you when they come out of the wilderness. On Sunday, I'm going to say this. I want you to jump now and then get a healthy offering, whatever that looks like on a Wednesday. I'm going to say this and see if 20 of y'all really jump and not play with me. The only thing God has to do to change your season on Sunday, I'm going to be preaching this, is take the word desert, add an S, and now you have dessert. You're one letter away from the change. And what they did is they had dessert in the desert. God said, let's eat. We don't have to change the place. We don't have to change the location. We gonna eat right where we were starving. We gonna smile right where we were sad. We gonna dance right where we were paralyzed. We are not changing an address to address it. <laughs> 